Greetings everyone, I'm Karen Jane Casey and this is Turn to God with Karen on StormTalk365Radio.com and while we're on this podcast we'll be looking for overcoming life challenges, for healing to the brokenhearted, and we look for a good future. And during this 15 minute episode there will be no lecturing down at you, there will no be, not be any yelling and preaching at you, but rather I'm sharing what I've learned and what I'm still learning in my journey, and we learn together. I encourage you to share. Your testimony is important and someone does need to hear it. Let's start out praying together. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you for all that you've done in our lives all that you've brought us through. You are our strength and refuge in times of trouble. Lord, we ask, we pray that you save, heal, and protect all of our loved ones and all of their loved ones, our friends, acquaintances, our community, our country. With God, all things are possible. Please forgive us of our sins as we forgive the sins of others against us. Thank you for your love, compassion, and mercy. Your, and for your grace through Jesus. And Lord, please be with me now as I speak and give me your words that are wise, kind, and healing. In Jesus' name, amen. Our episode title today is New Dreams. What brought, brought me to this topic today was something unexpected. A friend casually asked me if I'd like to go to a specific event being held by another dear friend, but the catch was the location and the time of it. It was to be an evening event at a place that used to be well known to me. It used to be a wild and lively place where people danced and drank, a meeting place for singles. Maybe on some nights it's still like that, I don't know. I actually know nothing about how it is there now, and I suppose it's open for a variety of events. That mere suggestion though, that brought me back to a sad time in my life, probably 20 years ago. And at that time, I was deep into recovery following a life-threatening domestic violence situation. The Lord had provided me a way of escape, and I was very young and immature as a believer. In those days, after work, guys and gals, would friends, would sometimes meet at this place. I'm not giving the name of it. Um, we'd talk about our problems with work and troubles in our personal lives, but only on a super, superficial level. We'd act as if we were fine, we were over it, almost joking about the issues that were secretly important to us. We would act as if life was great, we were having fun, we could drink and dance our cares away for that moment. We'd say that we weren't lonely, that we didn't need a loved one in our lives, that we were fine even if they destroyed us through a miserable divorce. We were over those terrible relationship wounds, and we'd laugh and shrug it off, but our sad eyes would tell the truth of it. We wore our masks well, covering our brokenness, our loneliness, and the dread for the next day. As a baby, immature Christian, I would join in this group, and then I would go to church each Sunday, but as I moved closer to the Lord, almost without notice, I moved further from this crowd that I had been hanging around with. I gravitated towards studying the Word of God and not just attending church. But I was becoming more involved. I was learning how to praise and worship the Lord and enjoying it. I found the Word of God interesting and I felt so much at peace when I was in that arena. There, I met nice people and enjoyed a few trips with women's groups. My desire was for adventure and travel, but could I go alone and enjoy it? Where could I travel alone and have a good time and yet feel safe? 
I enjoyed watching Joyce Meyer, a television evangelist. So when I saw that she was having a conference in Hershey, Pennsylvania, and that's only about six hours drive away from me, I became excited. I believed I knew I can do this. The adventure of, of it was amazing and exciting. The conference itself was uplifting and helped me to learn more about the Lord and about my role as a believer. It was my very first experience of praising, worshiping, singing, and prayer with thousands of other believers, people who love the Lord, all of us under one roof. I, I imagine the absolute joy that we experienced in this to be similar to what we will find in heaven. I am not such a good singer here on earth, but I will be an awesome singer for the Lord in heaven. I have new dreams, dreams of hope, not of despair. I can look forward to the future, not dreading it. And I learned when we face our problems and needs honestly with the Lord, there are endless possibilities. It's so much better than to pretend that I'm fine, we're not hurting, and to work at hiding it, maybe even medicating and drowning our pain and sorrows. We can pray to God, our Creator. He is our strength and refuge in times of trouble. With God, all things are possible. We can move from hopeless to hopeful. We can pray to Him directly or have a trusted believers to join us in prayer. The important thing is to bring it to the Lord. He is there for us when we're hurting. Psalm 34, 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Psalms 142, 2. I pour out before him my complaint. Before him I tell my troubles. Job 8, 7. Your beginning will seem humble to so prosperous will your future be. That's how I felt. My beginnings were very humble and how prosperous my future has become. As I began to enjoy thinking, saying, and doing things for and with the Lord and with other believers, my focus on problems became smaller and my focus on Jesus became greater. My attitude was positive more times than it was, than not. Authentically, with no mask, ugly, masking my ugly feelings, I had new dreams of a happy and fruitful future. My thoughts remained on lovely things that are of good report. I have no reason to fear, but to have faith, because I know the rest of the story. Jesus said in John 16, 33, I have told you these things so that, it, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. So whatever problems there may be, they are only temporary. Jesus has overcome. In the midst of anything, we can know that we are not alone. As in Psalms 105.4, we can look to the Lord and His strength and seek His face always. As my heart, my mind, and my soul changed, I could lay at night with new dreams and hopes for a good future. I became excited about the possibilities. I enjoyed working in my yard and to make it look like a well-groomed park. And I love decorating inside the house. I was alone, but no longer lonely. And that's how it was when I met my husband 12 years ago. We've been married six years, two believers who love the Lord. This is, my happy, is this my happily ever after? No, my happily ever after is when I'm spending eternity with the Lord. But life on planet Earth is great. <laughs> While I remember those early years of the past with thanksgiving, grateful that for all that I've been through, I know and think about my past friends and acquaintances. I wish I could say to you now that I had reached out to them and I prayed for them and I kept in touch, but that's 
really not how it happened. My interaction with the people of the past slowly faded away. I'm thankful that my friend recently invited me to this event so that I could reflect on my journey. I have a renewed sense of gratitude and a renewed concern for others. Now I have a newly kindled burden for all of those that I've met, known, and cared about. I pray for them. I pray for them all. I don't know what their life circumstances are now. I hope and pray that they are doing well. For their happiness, a positive outlook in life, for help in any situation or need that they may have, and for their salvation. I will continue to pray for them going forward. I want each of them to have a good hope for the future with Jesus. It's a process. I'm not yet where I ought to be, but thank God I'm not where I used to be. I have passion, a purpose, a desire to share with others, to encourage, to make a positive influence with words that give peace and assistance in challenges. I'm not perfect. Yes, I make mistakes and I, and I, I pray to God about them. I love to point people to Jesus for their restoration and for their healing. We can each have a new dream, a hope for a good future. Proverbs 3, 6, in all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. Can anyone relate to the story I just told? With God, all things really are possible. And I believe that the Bible is the living word of God. And I believe that all scriptures are inspired by God. That's why I share scriptures on this podcast. In his word, God tells us that he loves us. Jeremiah 31, 3. He says, yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. Do we believe it? Do we believe that God can do anything and that he can heal us? Do we believe that we can give God our problems and have faith that he will handle it? His ultimate love and sacrifice for us was already proven. He loved us all so much that he sacrificed his only son, Jesus, to suffer on the cross for our sins. And Jesus died and rose again. He defeated death so that we can have a future, eternity with the Lord. How do we receive this? Only through Jesus, only by the blood of Jesus. It's in the scriptures, John 3, 16, John 14, 6. If we believe it, then we need to communicate to him and tell him, make a commitment with him and develop a relationship. We can say it in prayer. I always ask if you have a relationship with Jesus because I believe that it's significant for your future. Coming to Jesus is a personal decision. We have a choice because he did not want to make us robots. I encourage you to profess your belief directly to the Lord, such as a prayer that's often referred to as the sinner's prayer. It's a step a believer takes in pursuit of a relationship with the Lord. Please pray with me now, out loud. Dear Heavenly Father, I know that Jesus is the only begotten Son of God, and I know that Jesus suffered on the cross for my sins, and He arose from the grave. But I'm a sinner. I ask you to forgive me. I repent of my sins. Please help me to stand firm against my sinful life. I need you, Jesus. I am hopeless without you. I ask you now to come into my heart, be my Lord and Savior, and I will serve you all of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. When we say this prayer, we are telling the Lord that we believe and we are pledging to serve him. But also, we are actively choosing to begin our relationship with the Lord and we begin to work out our salvation. We have a journey to travel, and there will be 
potholes and detours. When we read and study the Word of God, pray, worship, and praise the Lord, we are developing a deeper and deeper relationship with Him. Like everything in life, it is a process. When I first accepted Jesus, I was not instantly mature in my faith. We work out our salvation, but over years in my journey and in your journey, we will learn more and more about Him. He carries us through the rough times and our relationship will grow. I know who I am. I am a daughter of the Most High King. I have purpose. My desire is to influence and encourage others to have faith in who they are in Christ and to enjoy knowing their purpose. Well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, episode on Turn to God with Karen. This is Karen Jane Casey, author, speaker, domestic violence advocate, and ambassador for Christ. Stay tuned for Turn to God with Karen every Monday morning at 6.30, Abundant Living with Karen every Tuesday morning at 7, and Moments with Karen every Wednesday morning at 7, all are Eastern Standard Time, and you can download and listen, listen to them anytime. And now you can simply Google the podcast by name and you will see their listing on the internet. These podcasts are all with stormtalk365radio.com. We're available on iTunes, Twitter, Alexa on Amazon, hosted by iHeartRadio and Spotify, and our platform is Spreaker.com. My website is KarenJaneCasey.com. That's C-A-R-I-N-J-A-Y-N-E. C-A-S-E-Y. And I would sincerely love for you to give me any feedback or suggestions you may have. Share your experience with this episode. Again, my website is KarenJaneCasey.com. You can also go to Karen Jane Casey on YouTube. And if you do go there, please subscribe to my videos, to my channel to see other videos. Well, thank you and God bless.